Hey, how's it going? Have you ever looked at a drawing that you've made or uh, some sort of artwork that you've created and you thought something's not quite right about it, but you're not sure how to fix it, how to level that piece up? Well, every month we do this how to fix your art live stream where we try to fix people's art and we show people how they can take something that's okay, pretty good, and just make it great. And this clip that I'm going to share with you today is actually pretty special because I was presenting a piece that I had finished uh, that I thought was was ready to go. It was done. And two professional illustrators, my buddies, Will, Lar Will Larry, <laughs> Will Terry, and Lee White, they actually showed me how I could fix my piece of art and make it better. And I'm grateful for that because so often, you know, I, I feel the same thing. I feel like, how can I make it better? but I don't have someone to bounce it off and, and see that. So it was good to have like a professional eye that wasn't my own to show me how to fix it. So check out this clip, see what happens at the end where they show me one thing to make it that much better. I will show you one of my own drawings that I uh, worked on this week and how I approached the, um, the, the way I colored it. Cause I was going down one direction and really not knowing what I wanted kept iterating a little bit here and there until I finally landed where something I, I felt was good. So, all right. So this is a uh, parrot dragon uh, that I designed. You can see here's the line work. Uh, did this for um, one of my last Inktober drawings of the month. And I wanted to color it. I wanted to have, you know, this is a parrot. So I thought this would be nice, a chance to really go in there and do, do some color for it. So this is my first um, sort of flatting of the color. And that's how I work when I'm working with the line work. Um, this is how I come into it is I, I'll just lay in flats. Um, and as I was looking at parrot reference, a lot of there's essentially two kinds of macabre parrot parrots. It seems like, is there's a, there's a red one and a green one. Right. And I thought, well, let's make my parrot red. And then because, um, I, you know, my limited understanding of color theory is, well, I want a focus point for the character on the back of the the parrot. So I'm going to make her wearing these green, she, maybe she has green hair, maybe she has a green um, uh, outfit on. And I did this and then I went to bed and I thought, I'm going to look at this in the morning. And that's actually one of my, my, my color fixing tips is allow enough room in your schedule with the piece that you can step away from it could just be 15 minutes, but oftentimes working on something going to, uh, you know, going away for it for a night and coming back the next day, you look at it with so many, you know, such a different viewpoint. You almost see it as if other people are seeing a new set of eyes. And when I came back to it, I was like, you know what? She needs to be wearing red. And he, this parrot needs to be having, uh, needs to be green, right? So um, I went in there and I changed the parrot to a, a green. Um, and I wanted to add like a flesh tone to the wings as well. So I went in there, couldn't decide if the wings should be light with uh, dark or dark with light, right? Um, and then I wanted to make sure that I had, um, where's that Where's that layer? There's a layer there where I, I have the skin tone. Um, oh yeah. So with, with this parrot green, I wanted to make my character red as well. And also to put in some, um, we've got sort of this, uh, red, yellow, blue, green sort of thing happening. I'm throwing all the colors into it, right? <laughs> um, so I made her hair blue, made his beak blue to kind of tie those two things together. I didn't want to just have one bit of blue popping, but have maybe a little triangle of, of blue here, a little dual thing happening with red, and then mostly green. And this right here just wasn't sitting with me either. I felt like it needed this tan tannish yellowish skin tone just wasn't really working for it um my i was because 
I was thinking logically instead of color wise. Right. And so logically I'm like, these wings don't have feathers on them. So why would they be green? <laughs> right. And so what I realized is like these wings have to be green in order for it to, uh, in order for this whole piece to like be cohesive. So once I did that, I felt like I was finally getting into a space where I was like pretty happy with, uh, with what this, uh, what this character was looking. So I need to take out and erase the, uh, the under thing. So now this sort of flat image without any, any, uh, um, light and shadow on it. I felt like this was getting pretty darn close. It's a mostly green parrot dragon. Um, but then we've got, um, these little pops of red to really draw our attention down here. Um, but, one thing that I like to do to make these colors work a little bit closer together, be a little bit more cohesive is I have this layer here, which is uh, a kind layer. And if you, oh wait, no, it's not. It's an overlay layer. Sorry. <laughs> kind. <laughs> it's a very kind, sweet, endearing layer. <laughs> it's an overlay layer and it is set to about 20%. It's this pink color. And just barely putting that on there, what it did was it took all my darkest darks and gave them a little bit of a more of a rosiness to them. And it was just a way to like blend things together. And then I didn't like how light things were going up here. So I did an, a gradient of green down there so that our attention really is brought more into this. Okay, so then, um, then it's just a matter of adding light and shadow. And these are my light and shadow layers here. Uh, throw all those on there. And then um, I like to have a little bit of a, a noise filter on there. I'll zoom in really close so you could see what the noise filter does to it. So you could see a lot of these colors is kind of flat to it. You add a noise filter to it and it gives this overall like film texture to it. But I made it kind of a tan noise filter. And, and the way you do that, I'll just show you here. You go into noise and add noise, essentially. Um, that's what you do to, to your layer. Um, and so what that did too, if I zoom out here, you could see this noise layer is also set to overlay at 50%. And that's another way to kind of tie all these colors together and lighten things up a little bit. Um, all right, let me turn off the... Uh, let me just get to this other layer here. I had um, one last thing, and that is to add these two layers over the top of it. And you can see one is an overlay and the other, they're both overlays, right? And what I'll do is I'll copy and paste the entire image and put it over the top and adjust the colors just a little bit and set it to overlay. And what that'll do is, again, saturate things that need to be a little bit more saturated. And you can see here how dull that is compared to these little bits of overlaid saturatedness over the top of them. And that's just like my photo, Photoshop trick to make something punch just a little bit, that, that last little layer of, of punch to add to it. So yeah, so we started out here and we ended up here. And uh, you could see trying to keep my reds and oranges and and yellows all kind of in the same same range. I have a little bit of this yellow down here that, that pops it out, but it's out of the way. So I don't think it draws too much attention to itself. And um, and that's how I how I approach color. Now you guys can tear this apart if you want. <laughs> <laughs> Garbage. <laughs> no, good job. It's, no, it's neat it's, to see your process because it's so different than mine. It's I think it is, me and will have similar process, whereas this is so out of left field for me. This is the process of someone who doesn't know how to color. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't say that. It's you have your own method. You know, yeah. you have a way of doing it that works. Yeah. And I uh, do at like the end, I will notice that you have all you have these competing colors, but then they're they get desaturated a little bit, even though there is that saturation layer right at the end. Mm -hmm. And I will add that almost every painting I do as well, that last layer is a, I, I, I increase the contrast 10% and I increase the saturation 10%. It almost always looks better. Mm -hmm. So it's yeah. neat to see somebody else having to do that. 
Yeah. Uh, I saw one question in there that says, um, how would you, how do you copy and paste all the layers? I'll just show you really quick. This is a simple, it's like first thing you learn day one in Photoshop. So the whole thing selected, you just go here to image, uh, M image, edit. I said, edit and image together. <laughs> image. Image. <laughs> you go to edit and you click on copy merge and it's shift command C. So copy merged. And then I'll just do a new thing here and paste. And the whole thing is together. Mm -hmm. That's a, that's one dollar of your monthly fee of Photoshop right there is the, the copy merged tool. <laughs> so, so some people are asking, um, would, why do the ears and the, the outfit the same red? But then at the same time, they're saying it does, they're all in the same place. So the focal point is all right there. Mm -hmm. And I think it works. I wouldn't make that choice. Someone else said they wouldn't make that choice. Mm -hmm. um, but it works because you're not being drug off. If, if you had, if he had, you know, like these red wings or red things going on back in the wing area, yeah, it, it wouldn't work, but it's, but it draws your eye right into that same area. I'm going to try and uh, I'm going to see what, what would happen if I change them to green. Do you guys want to look at that really quick? Yeah. Well, can you do one thing before that real quick? Yeah. Just select the ears by themselves and keep the red, but make them just darker. I mean, just change the value basically. Yeah, change it to dark red. Um, okay. And then that'll create enough difference, but it'll still be in the same family. Okay, hold on. Whoops. Let's do a little, hot, a, little hot. We'll do a we'll do a <laughs> hold on. Hold on, you guys. He knows what this he's is, doing. He's a pro. He's a pro. And dude, something like that. Playing. Yeah. Darker. Just to separate. I just wanted to like separate. Yeah, darker, but then keeping it desaturated. So that's the only snag there. Yeah, maybe this just paint, way just, just doing a do a multiple layer and just paint some black over it in a in a thin. There we go. There we go. This will be fun to to have one of us have a line drawing and the other two paint it with that person. Drawing. <laughs> That's what we need to do. We need to do that, you guys. <laughs> saying that, I do want to add. I do want to add that um, everybody has their own uh, take on color. It's it's funny how natural it is for you to respond a certain way to certain color palettes and other people to respond differently. And so, uh, you know, if you're, there's a sort of a finding your style lecture that needs to maybe happen with finding your color style. And what I would recommend there is, is, you know, look through all your Pinterest boards and people that you like and, and sort of just analyze it through, uh, through the lens of color and saturation, because I tend to work less saturated than Will and Jake and, um, a little more muted and, and very much, um, uh, uh, I use an al analogous palette a lot more. And then Jake's a little bit hotter. And so we all just have our tendencies and it would be dumb for me to just look at any color, anybody, how they're using color and say, okay, I'm going to do that. Cause I don't respond to some, the way mm -hmm. I do others. Um, and will too. And so we all, we all kind of develop our own color personality mm -hmm. for lack of a better term. Mm -hmm. Um, and, but it pays to dig in and look at that just by itself, not, not thinking about image, what the image is or any of that, mm -hmm. but just what colors do you respond to? What palettes do you respond to? And pay attention to it. And if everyone did it the same, it would be a boring world to live in, right? Like you should be looking to push. We, we're we giving you like things, general things that work, but you mm -hmm. should be looking to push beyond that. And um, yeah, I personally, I like it better. Like you're doing it now, Jake, mm -hmm. but uh that that's kind of how my brain wants to see it. And I think I like think, it better too that way because then the red stays on the character. Yeah. But again, yeah. this is this is what the process of color studies are, and you can see you can just burn through them really quickly. You can be rough in them, and then you get that finish. You know exactly what you're going to do, and paint it to finish. Yeah, it's great. Well, that's Maybe cool. I like the yellow green. on the front. That's nice. Yeah. Uh, you're going a little crazy there now. Come on. Settle down. <laughs> Settle down there, buddy. There we go. Maybe that's better. That actually Man. works. Yeah. I like that better. This is, yeah. this is way better. We've fixed the art right here. 
right here. How to fix Jake's art is what this is. How to fix Jake's art. (laughs) All right. I'll I'll go back in and do it for real. um, You know, sometime tonight, because I wanted to make a print of this and no one's going to want to print when there's so much red right there. (laughs) (laughs) They're going to want it like this. (laughs) <laughs> All right. I really appreciate Will and Lee helping me out with that. They saw something that I hadn't seen after working on it for like, I don't know, eight hours I put into that piece so far. So they did me a solid. Now, if you want to have your artwork submitted to How to Fix Your Art, which is our monthly live stream, happens every third Thursday where we fix people's art. They submit art that they they've gotten it as far as they can get it, and then we take it that much further to show them how to level up those pieces. And if you want to be a part of that, go to svslearn.com, click on the forum link at the top there, and then there's a thread where it says submit your art for how to fix your art, something like that. And then we go through and we pick art that we really think uh, we could help and that we could uh, other people could learn from us fixing it. So go check that out. Um, these live streams, they're up for about 24 hours, maybe 48, 48 hours, depending on when we get to it. And then they get taken down and they're archived just for svslearn.com like subscription members. So if you want to have access to these moving forward, uh, you have to join the subscription. Right now we're doing a two-week free trial. You get access to 80 courses. You get access to our 20-course uh, foundations program, which takes you from literally the beginning, like how do you hold a pencil correctly for for you know maximum effect to all the way to like having portfolio pieces that you could put in your portfolio and try to get you know professional work done. So go check that out. And uh, we will hope to see you at our next How to Fix Your Art session. So that's it. Go draw something.